there's a lot of talk online, a lot of photos floating around of the new Texas Chainsaw 3D. And I don't know what you think about it. Have you have you seen yeah, some I, of the photos? Honestly, until you posted the stuff, like I had no idea about like the photos or anything. But when I when I looked at it, I was like, and I had the same gut reaction that a lot of people do. Is like, is he wearing a fucking jumpsuit? Like, a, <laughs> is he, did he come out of prison? <laughs> yeah, he probably did. That's the first thought that I yeah. had. Like, and it wouldn't surprise me if he did break out of prison. Actually, like in the movie, but it doesn't look. Man, I mean, I won't say it looks horrible because we haven't seen enough of it to really say that or anything. But it looks like one of those fucking Platinum Dune movies that, like, the, all the other ones that we saw. Like, what makes, in my opinion, what makes anybody think it's going to be any better? Or why would you be excited? I, unless you loved the remake and the prequel, which, goddamn, bless your heart if you did, really. Yeah, you need some help. <laughs> I know a lot of people really love the remake, though, and... Like, I got, because I did a couple of things on YouTube, and I got hated like a motherfucker for shitting on the, because I said, and I still believe this, I think that the remake of Texas Chainsaw is the worst Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, in my opinion, you know, for a multitude of reasons. For one thing, the original, and and I, I've always felt this too, I don't think any of those movies, aside from the very first one, should even be called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because none of, they all pale in comparison, like... And I don't know of any other franchise that has that has done that. Where, to me, I mean, the second one, people like the second one. I never really did like the second one that much. I mean, I think that it's a different type of movie, and he probably did the best sequel that he could have done. <clears throat> but the, the the first one just has that realism and that look that's creepier and fuck. And when you see that remake, there's nothing at all creepy or anything like it just looks like a big production shit fest is what i think of when i think of that 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 remake from 2003 and it the the chainsaw in 03 led the way for all of these pieces of shit remakes to come out in the years since and that's what started it man that movie made a ton of money and from 2003 on the rest of that decade was shit that had been done better decades earlier done by filmmakers that have no fucking business making a movie. I still think that the the thing that captivates me about the whole remake trend is in the in the whole new cycle of remakes that that film spawned, right? Yeah. Name me one that was as good as the original. You can't in I mean, all of them. Like there's no. been how many of them? Probably 100, I would say. You can't even I can come up with with one or two that I liked. And other than that, no, I don't even like any of them. I think that one of the best ones, just because they took a completely different approach than the original, was the Last House on the Left remake. That was one of the better ones. Yeah, it was. In my opinion, a lot of people didn't yeah, Some people like disagree that with that. But I think that that guy that made that, uh, I keep thinking his name's Dennis Alita, 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 Adidas or Alita. Adidas, yeah, something like that. You can tell that guy knows how to make a fucking movie. And I think that Hollywood nowadays, they don't give a fuck if you know how to make... They, they care if you know how to operate a goddamn camera and boss people around, maybe. But if you want to take a risk in a movie, they're like, fuck you. You're going to do what we say, and this is going to be some big budget shit fest again, and we're going to take all these dumb asses' money because, hey, they like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And that's it. It's kind of like photo ops, though. I mean, if people would just keep paying for it, it'd just never go away, you know? It's just... Oh, that's never going away. Yeah. I mean, sad thing is, man, is like, I see a filmmaker like Lucky McKee, and I was talking to somebody today, one of the most talented fucking guys, and I've never, I've yet to see a movie by him that I didn't like, that I didn't think was flat out fucking awesome. Yeah. And the guy is fucking making these low-budget movies for fucking websites producing shit, and you got these goddamn motherfuckers out there that uh, the they get to make these multi-million dollar remakes and all they've done is stupid music videos and shit. And they don't know how to stick the thumb in and out of their asshole. <laughs> they really don't. And you got the talented filmmakers are fucking barely getting by because they want to make the movies they want to make and they don't want to, they don't want these idiots telling them what to do and make everything like a, 
like it's from a fucking factory or something. All these remakes look like they're made by the exact same person. Yeah, there was two guys I always thought like that would be really, really big and that really didn't, they really didn't, I don't know if they didn't get a chance to be mainstream or if they just didn't, weren't able to cut it, but I always thought Brad Anderson and Lucky McKee would be like the next generation, like Carpenter and yeah. Craven and stuff, but they, I don't know, it just never happened. Like, yeah. I mean, it I know like that, it will be. I don't think you've got to see Red or The Woman yet, and I watched both of those on Netflix. And I was thinking, well, I didn't hear much about these. Maybe they're not as good. He's getting even fucking better, man. I mean, his shit is fucking great. And it's a shame that you've got these fucking dickheads out here that get all this, all these mainstream uh, publicity and money and the studios behind them. The studios just don't want people that actually have original thoughts. That seems like it's to me. They want somebody that'll just do, do what they're told. Basically. Yeah, it's not really about that anymore. Like that whole era of being able to make movies like that, like yeah. independent movies with studio backing and stuff, that's gone. That doesn't even exist anymore, yeah. really. But yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys where I'm like, I just, it just pisses me off so much because that guy. You know, and and there are, like, James Wan is one guy that seems to have got by a little bit. But even then, I mean, man, after Insidious, you, uh, the success of that movie, that movie made a ton of money, and it did really well, and it was based on just his idea, you know. But I don't know, man. I mean, the, the Texas Chainsaw thing, though, getting back to that, people that have high hopes for it, in my opinion, I, you know, people say, oh, man, you shouldn't judge a movie until you see it. Not t since 1974 has there been a good Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. What makes you think fucking 40 years later some asshole making a 3D <laughs> fucking version of it is going to be better? I'm first, sorry. First of all, first of all, just think about how degrading the idea of having a movie that was as like as powerful and as iconic, how fucking silly and degrading and and like talking dumbing down the audience it is to put a movie like that in 3D. Yeah, I mean, if this ain't Friday the Thirteenth for one thing, it's not. It, I mean, the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was, for all intents and purposes, almost like a snuff film. Yep. Like, felt like a snuff film. And, like, it's gotten so watered down and commercialized now that it's in fucking 3D. <laughs> to me, just that idea is, like, it's amazing. It's And people, like, people aren't outraged about that, which is, that's another thing that's amazing to me, too. That, that uh, It's not like it's fucking piranha or anything. You know, it shouldn't be in, it, the idea of it being in 3D shouldn't even exist. That's the latest fad, though. It's what they've got to market to the idiots out there that go to the movies. That just that alone makes me hate it, and before I even see it. But I mean, I I will probably go see it because it's the only thing coming we'll out. We'll fucking see it, and I won't be on. I mean, we could be completely wrong. It could be goddamn fucking great. And if it is, well, I will fucking admit it. But people can't go. On the fact that, oh man, it's going to have some of the original cast in it. What the fuck has any of the original cast done since the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre? They haven't done nothing. Fucking Gunnar Hansen's in fucking Harpoon Well Watch Well Watchers Massacre. How is that going to make it good? I could give a fuck less if they're in it. It's cool that they're giving them like, maybe they're giving them like an homage or something that they're in it. Marilyn Burns is fucking... Did you ever see fucking Future Kill? <laughs> Marilyn Burns and fucking Ed Neal was in that piece of shit. It, it was not good. It was far from fucking good. It just amazes me how goddamn <laughs> stupid people are. Just You reference Future The Kill. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, honestly, was a fluke. The same cast, everybody associated with it, they could never ever fucking do it again it was like something that was just trapped in time that they captured you know nobody has ever been able to fucking do it again toby hooper's fucking ass tried to do it again with eating alive and that movie sucked fucking dick <laughs> it wasn't very good enough why can't you say this is a piece of cinema 
that is just amazing. And we'll leave it be. And that's that's that. They're not going to do it because they're fucking greedy ass assholes at Warner Brothers. And this movie, mark my words, fucking saying this, uh, September the 6th, 2012, September 7th when y'all hear this, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D is just going to be another shitty fucking cash in on everything. It will, I guarantee you it'll pale in comparison to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And all the people out there that want to argue that, you're going to be wrong. Yet again. Yet again. Yeah. I don't know anybody that would... I mean, I know there are people that are right now currently arguing that this is going to be a good movie, but I don't know why. Like, I really don't know what makes anybody think that. I mean, we're we're going to go see it. That's the thing. We will see it. We'll judge it when it comes out. But I just think some of these people... Has history not told you anything? I mean, that's my question. But then again, those are the same people that liked the remake and that thought that, you know, believe it or well, not, they're wrong. Believe it or not, though, man, there is a large group of people out there that actually think that the remake is a better movie. Yeah, but they're beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Yeah, they're beneath me, and I'm peeing on them right now. You can't see him. His time is my eyes. Yeah, anybody that just says that have no, have, they have no clue what they're talking about. Basically, so uh, I, I just, I can't waste my time with them. And some people actually, I do remember this vividly. People saying that about the Halloween remake too, that they thought that 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 Rob Zombie's vision and that they never really liked Halloween. They thought it was much more exciting right. film and all that. Yeah, but those are the opinions you ignore, folks. <laughs> <laughs> those are the opinions of retards and madmen. Yeah, you don't really. When you hear somebody say something like that, you're kind of like, okay, let's just move slowly away. (laughs) Point and laugh, children. But yeah, I just wanted to get that out there because I wanted to make some sort of statement on it. You know, we as horror fans are going to go see it. There's no doubt about it. But what, I mean, it's 40 years, it's been about 40 years since the original movie. My humble opinion, none of the sequels or the remake or the prequel is even in the same stratosphere as that original. I mean, it it never even comes remotely close. I mean, I can remember when I first saw the movie, my dad rented it. I was like six years, seven years old, whenever we got a VCR. It fucked him up when he watched I mean, he couldn't get through it. It freaked him out so bad. When's the last time anybody saw any movie that left them that uncomfortable in a theater. I can't remember. I don't think I ever saw one in a theater like that. No. I you don't know. think I did either. I think that that's what the studios and stuff don't realize. What makes a movie memorable is your reaction the first time you watch it. Now, some people are just completely, they're pussies. They'll fucking get scared of any goddamn thing. But, like, if you up the ante, man, and make something that is just, I mean, just some of the scenes in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, man, I mean, you don't see, it's not what you really see, it's what you don't see. Like, you get the impression, yes, this this woman is hanging on a fucking hook, you know, and it's just like, people think they see stuff they don't see, you know, and anymore, it's just like, oh, we're going to show you buckets of gore and every goddamn thing else. And it really completely loses its impact. And I just think people don't know how to make movies now. They suck. <laughs> That's okay. I just like... Yeah. That's a very blanket statement towards the end. Yeah. People ain't worth a shit. No, they're not. The truth of the matter is, though, with uh, it's not about making memorable movies anymore. It's about making money. And I guess it was always kind of about making money. But in the 70s, especially, it seems like, they did give give people a little bit more creative rain over films and tried to do well some... it was a it was a different thing then though too i mean it's not as not as like business oriented it's become like survival now though yeah. with theaters and stuff and, and and movie studios like it's become because there's so much stuff on the on the internet and so much things to compete with now that they only ever really make stuff that they can almost guarantee will make some kind of profit make some kind of money they don't try anything they really don't yeah 
I mean, it's just the landscape has changed so much, though, from the, you know, and, and you got these independent filmmakers now that say, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that was an independent film. Halloween was an independent film, you know. Um, it really thing, wasn't the, in the way they're thinking. Yeah, independent it's film, very it really different, wasn't. very different comparing independent film even then, because you had so much more on the line then than you have. You can fucking buy fucking four DV tapes or whatever they use, you know, for like what I don't even know how much they are, like twenty dollars, twenty five dollars. You had thousands I mean, you could, and thousands of dollars put in these independent movies back then. Like I, I mean. That's the that's the difference. So these independent filmmakers now they they're using consumer products to make their fucking movies. You know they're not using real film equipment. Right. And to me, I never, I've never called anybody a filmmaker that never fuck. I mean, I know it's a pompous thing to say, but they they would have no fucking clue how to use a fucking film camera. They just wouldn't because they're used to using tapes and shit. Fuck them. You've really gone off the rails, <laughs> Dave. I'm just saying, like, you can't compare independent filmmakers that were releasing their films on a mainstream level compared to these little fucking hoodoers and shit at conventions. Hoodoers! <laughs> hey, you hoodoer. <laughs> they're just running around. You gypsy fairy. Yeah, they're just running around peddling their shit. Basically that like, is true, though. In a lot of ways, I agree with that. Because if you had $5,000, which is a reasonable amount for a lot of people that right. work could actually eventually come up with, then theoretically, you could make a lot of these movies that get made. You know, we see people at conventions and things like yeah. that. You could make something like that easy. You buy a camera for a couple thousand dollars. It's actually a pretty good camera. You know, you get couple other things sound equipment stuff like that going for that amount of money you get a bunch of friends together and you got a movie that's what a lot of these people do but that's not really what we're talking about like when we talk about independent movies and things like that like even though halloween was an independent movie they still spent like three hundred thousand three hundred some thousand dollars on it and it was backed by like a studio and things it was backed eventually by a studio when it got really popular and stuff so it had like an ad campaign and marketing and stuff like that behind it so there's a big disconnect between three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in nineteen seventy eight and five ten thousand dollars now. Like that's not even the same. You're not even really yeah. looking at the same ballpark. Or anything. Yeah, the, the thing is though about me and the independent filmmakers is look if you have a dream of making a movie and you want to do it, you just fucking you fucking do it. Do okay. it, bitch. But no, leave us alone. Yeah, I don't want to hear from your bullshit. Please. Like, I mean, because, okay, if it's like we were going back before, we were talking about rich people. Rich people, you're going to know they're fucking rich, okay? And if you make a good film, we're going to fucking hear about it. And then we'll want to fucking see it. Right, that's true. You know, if I hear something fucking killer, I'm going to fucking, and we've got movies like that before, I'm going to fucking get it. I'm not going to fucking just blatantly want to watch fucking, you know, Dick Tarrant Massacre or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Have a Jolly Holly fucking Sleigh Bell Christmas or whatever the fuck you bullshit you fucking got. And I understand you want to get your movie out there and shit. But see, we've got a filter system we go through now. Okay? We don't have the time or the patience. To sit and watch you fucking backyard bullshit. Now you're just being mean. I know. I'm being mean. But if you've got a dream to make a film, make a film, make it as best as you fucking can. Submit it to Film Fest. Win awards. Get people interested in your product. You know, get it on DVD, distributed by a real company. Don't fucking put it at yourself. But more importantly, leave us alone. Yeah, leave us alone. (laughs) 